let's look at the final collection in Swift 3, and these are called dictionaries. A dictionary stores associations between keys of the same type and values of the same type. And it stores these in a collection with no defined order because you don't really need it. So mostly, a dictionary in a programming language is much like a word dictionary, something you'd look up a key in, for example, a word, and you'd get the value from, for example, that word's definition. So let's look at how we implement these dictionaries inside of Swift 3. Over in our playground, let's start with an empty document. And just before we begin, I want to address this line at the top that says playground noun, etc., etc. This starts with two forward slashes, and that means it is a comment. Comments are not taken into account of by the compiler, so Xcode completely ignores them. They're for us as humans to remember why we've just written that thing when we come back to it a few months later on. So back to dictionaries. And a dictionary is something like this, structurally speaking. A dictionary has a key and then a value, just like a word dictionary, as I've just said. So let's create one of these. Let's have a var called names of integers. And this is going to be a dictionary that allows us to look up an integer like two and then returns the human readable name, the word two. So let's initialize this with an integer as the key and then put a colon in and let's have a string as the value. Let's put our brackets in and initialize it as empty. Now I can give this its first key value pair. So let's have names of integers and let's give it the key which is in square brackets of two is equal to the word two. So now our dictionary has one key value pair, two and two. What if we wanted to put more than one string in there? Let's say this dictionary allowed us to look up the values of two in both English and Bulgarian. Well, that's simple enough. We can come up to this string declaration at the top and we can make this an array. So each integer will correspond to an array of strings. Now let's have names of integers two equal two. And you'll notice we have an error. And if we click it, it tells us we can't have a string, which is two in this case, and assign it to an array of strings. So let's get rid of its complaints. Let's have two comma, and let's put in another value. Bulgarian for two is dva. So now we have a dictionary that holds two and dva. And how do we access these values? Well, let's have a print names of integers. We open our square brackets, much like an array, and let's grab two. And then we need to put a question mark in. Don't worry about what this means for now. And then we have to pass it where uh, or which value we want to get out of our string array. So if I want to grab index one, that actually corresponds to element number two. And you'll notice on the side, it tells us we have dva. Optionals I will cover later, and backslash n, you already know what that means. So we have our value pulled out of the dictionary. Now dictionary values are going to be very, very useful, or the dictionary structure type, later on when you're creating apps. They're very, very flexible and a little hard to understand at first, but once you do, you will use them a lot.